Here's the first knockdown, Emmanuel. Right, right hook as he was coming. He never saw it. And what's amazing to see him land a punch and then slip a punch all at the same time shows unbelievable coordination. The issue has always and been timing. whether Hatton could get to Pacquiao and avoid these kinds of clean punches. Copybox numbers in round one utterly devastating to Pacquiao's chances. Pacquiao is 35 out of 62, 31 out of 52 power shots. Hatton only 8 out of 33. It was a Pacquiao storm in the first round. This, and we have to remember now, although it's a different type of fight, that Pacquiao knocked Marquez down three times in the first round. And then Marquez, a counterpuncher, began to solve him. Hatton is not a counterpuncher. Hard left hand by Hatton. Ricky has decided to fight fire with fire. And it's what he's going to have to do in this case, sure, he just is trying to smother this guy and get close. He's trying to punch at a certain distance. Pacquiao is actually just too sharp and uh, accurate a puncher. You heard Floyd Mayweather saying to Hatton, you can't just jump all over him. You've got to move your head. You've got to think. You've got to do the things we talked about in training camp. Hatton seemed to believe that he could physically overpower Pacquiao from the beginning. Yeah, I mean, he, uh, he knew in the beginning he was going to take the risk of getting caught, and he did. Because, you know, coming in, Pacquiao still is the puncher. The physical strength is still with Hatton, but the, the, the puncher is still Pacquiao. Hard left hand by Pacquiao. Stunned Hatton and knocked him back. Look at the brilliant accuracy of Manny Pacquiao. Landing with both right and left hands. Misses the right hook there. What Ricky needs to do is to smother him. He cannot see to be able to punch. He needs to push him. Just what he's doing there. Good left hook inside by Hatton. And then he closed down Pacquiao's left side. Hard right hand again by Pacquiao. Ricky can't see the hook coming. Kenny Bayless warns Hatton for holding behind the head. Hatton's most famous victory over Costa Zoo, he just smothered him and didn't allow him to get off. He can't seem to be able to get close enough to Pacquiao often enough to do that. And Costa Pacquiao's Zou. hands are so quick. That's the point. Pacquiao's, it's Pacquiao's blinding speed that sets him apart. As well as his head movement. His head movement is just a phenomenon. I don't think he's landed too much out of that exchange, but it just is. is Ability to punch, maintain balance, which he used to couldn't do. And his head, head movement is just too difficult for Hatton to time. I think Pacquiao may have spent the first two minutes of this round thinking knockout and allowed himself to get a little wild. Now he goes back to more precision. He yeah, lands but, a hard body shot. But Ricky isn't moving his head too much still. Regardless. His head is still right there. That is. Oh, oh my gosh, what a straight left there. Will Hatton make it up from this? Can he beat the count? Is that it? And Kenny Bayless says, no way. That is that. What an amazing knockout shot. That is the most spectacular one-punch shot of Manny Pacquiao's incredible career. In a fighter. Right. Time with a perfect left hand shot as he's coming in. Landing 34 of his last 53 power shots. 64%. And you know, Jim, the interesting thing is, before this fight tonight, he had shown this kind of power against the best featherweights, Barrera, Morales. <clears throat> and Take a look at this. Take a look at this. That's a, a perfect time. That and was super slow yeah, motion. Yeah, and he never saw a time him coming in. Yeah. It's the first time he's knocked out somebody like this since he was at 130 pounds. 
And Hatton's head hit the canvas very hard. He was knocked out as soon as Double the punch landed. Double jeopardy. He was unconscious from the moment he caught that shot. Goes to the canvas in the proverbial heap. And boom. Out of our camera range at that angle, the head pounded against the canvas. Here's another look. So Floyd Mayweather made his statement on a podium this morning, saying, I'm back and I'm still the best. Manny Pacquiao makes his statement right here in the ring, he knocking out Ricky Hatton. And his trainer, Freddie Roach, had predicted it would not go past three rounds. Carol Hatton is sitting down. Ray Hatton is standing up in the white shirt, looking away at the left corner of your screen. That's the Hatton family area in the crowd. They're hoping that their son is going to be all right. That's Hatton's fiance, Jennifer, in the red dress. And you can see the emotion on her face at this very moment. There's Ricky. And as we look at Ricky, we'll go up to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on the knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, the end comes at two minutes, 59 seconds, round number two. The winner by TKO victory. And now, the new IBO and Ring Magazine, late welterweight, champion of the world, and still, pound for pound, the best in the world, Manny Pac-Man. Two men have gotten the best of Ricky Hatton in his 47 fight career. Both of them knocked him out. Floyd Mayweather in 10 rounds. Manny Pacquiao in two. And all credit to Pacquiao's trainer, Freddie Roach, who was angry about the publicity, angry at everything that Hatton's trainer said about him and said, my man will knock out Ricky Hatton within three rounds. He did it. 73 landed punches for Pacquiao out of 127 thrown. In other words, he practically couldn't miss. 18 out of 78 for Hatton, who was still scratching and sniffing and looking for some way to be in the fight at the moment when the end came. An amazing display of speed and skill. But it was, his punches were so accurate. He was punching, slipping, ducking, and punching. A, I don't recall ever seeing a fighter that sharp that was doing offense and defensive at the same time. Let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring. Yeah. All right, thank you very much, Jim. Congra congratulations, Manny. Were you surprised how this fight went? Um, I mean, uh, I'm surprised that um, the fight is, uh, is kind of easy, but for me, I consider the fight is, is hard because he, 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 he can punch. He, he has a strong um, left hand. All right, let's take a look at the knockout, and you describe what were you thinking at the time? Did you know that one punch could finish him? Describe it. Um, that's what our, uh, our strategy, the one punch, hook by hook, um, left hook and right hook, that's going to be the key of the, this fight. All right, but going back into the first round, it was your right hook that was doing the damage. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the first round is, uh, I expected my hook, my right hook is going to be uh, uh, dangerous for him because uh, he's open while he's uh, coming forward and his hands is down. So You think he was trying to avoid your left hand, which is usually your power hand? That's right, that's right. But he's, he's very surprised because I have a, I, I have a new technique, the right hook. Alex, Freddie, because you got the best trainer in the world. You got the, the best trainer. <laughs> Do you feel that a fighter who comes to you this way and tries to get to you, inevitably you're going to be able to impose your power on him? I mean, I mean, sir, like what I said, 
I'm always doing my job in the ring and uh, do my best to make people happy and like, All right, like this like this fight and you know uh, there's nothing personal for me it's uh, I'm just doing my job all right speaking of doing a job let's go back to the first round and take a look at the knockdowns and describe them the first knockdown yeah th that's the right hook we, we study that every day in, in the gym uh, we study that every day in the gym if you see the 24/7 the I mean I throw a lot of hooks in the training so that's why he's very surprised on that, on that uh, style is this fight as satisfying to you as your victory over Oscar De La Hoya? I mean, um, I'm satisfied. I mean, uh, you know, uh, nothing personal. I'm just doing my job. And I mean, I'm always uh, uh, trying my best in the ring, you know, to give more impression to the people. All right. We all know that Floyd Mayweather Jr. is coming back. He's going to be f fighting a fighter you had really tough fights with Marquez. If he wins that fight, is that a fight you want, you and Mayweather? Well, uh, I can fight anybody, you know. Um, it depends how my promoters are negotiations are, and, and I'm just fighter and doing my job training and keep, keep 100% in, the, in, the, in that fight. All right, thank you very much again for a great fight. Thank you, sir, and I hope everybody happy. Thank you very much to all, to all of you guys who are coming here tonight. Thank you. Many being many. many, many. And this is Freddie Roach being Freddie Roach. You predicted a third round knockout. I don't think we're going to hold it against you that you were wrong by a round. Why did you make that prediction? And what did you see happening in this fight that was going to make it come true? Well, every time Ricky throws his left hand, he pulls it back and cocks it. And he's wide open for a short right hook on the inside from a southpaw stance. And we worked on that every day in the gym, the timing shot. And it just worked beautiful. Did you know after that first round that, okay, now it's going to happen any time, it's going to be over? Or did you think that uh, he, that Hatton still had the, the strength to make it a longer fight? No, I knew it was over because Ricky doesn't have the ability, it seems like, to adjust. He fights the same way over and over again. I've watched tapes of him for the last two and a half months. I know him pretty well. What do you think about the possibility of Manny fighting Mayweather should Mayweather beat Marquez in July? Um, I think it's a very good possibility. It's a fight that if the fans want to see it, I think everyone, it's a natural fight out there. The two best fighters in the world, I think it'd be a great fight. 